Hi, it's August 5th. We're continuing to track Debbie, which is now ashore over northern Florida. Did become a hurricane before landfall in the vicinity of Steinhatchee and is now located inland over northern Florida, the core of the storm, bringing strong enough winds to cause power outages for several hundred thousand people over north Florida and southern Georgia, and very heavy rains as the storm is only crawling forward and the forward motion continues to slow. It may take a day or a day and a half for this to move towards the Georgia coastline where it is expected to move back over water for some period of time, unclear how long yet, but we'll discuss that in a minute, and very heavy rains will continue over this region and the storm will cross the Florida Georgia line potentially later on today. Now as this goes forward we see that there's already rain spreading well to the northeast of the storm as well into Georgia and coastal South Carolina. This region is expected to receive the highest amounts of rainfall over the next several days by the time the storm event finally ends. It is going to take most of the week, however, as Debbie will be continuing to move slowly in weak steering currents and will be in this region for quite some time. The forecast for Georgia and the Carolinas going forward has a lot of uncertainty in it still because of uncertainties about how far Debbie will get out over the water again and for how long will determine what hazards and where those hazards go. The one thing we do know, and that has been constant on all projections, has been the rainfall. And the inland flooding threat is the biggest hazard here, and is over a wide area, not super dependent on exactly where Debbie tracks, and will be present probably no matter what here. High risk for flooding. Be prepared for that over the coming days, and stay safe. As far as some of the other details beyond the inland flooding, though, much depends on several little wrinkles in an environment where Debbie will be crawling around and meandering. Weak steering current situations are difficult to predict because tiny changes can mean big differences later, and that's what we're dealing with here. If we look at the GFS 500 millibar chart, you'll see where Debbie is centered just inland over Georgia on Tuesday afternoon. If you look at the European model, it's in roughly the same place, not too different, a little closer to Savannah on Tuesday afternoon. Now on the GFS, what happens here is we have two ridges, one to the west of the storm right here, one to the east of the storm right here, and uh, the flow between these two ridges are opposing, and so the storm is moving slowly. There's also this piece of energy to the southeast, a little bit of an upper level low to the southeast, which is imparting just a little bit of a northeasterly nudge on Debbie. And these features are all playing together to determine what the steering flow is. Now on the GFS, the storm does get out over water. And what happens here is eventually uh, it moves back towards the northwest as this western Atlantic Ridge begins to nose back in towards the coastline on the model. So a little bit of a southeastward push gets this back ashore exactly where it came from in Georgia about a day and a half after it nears the coast. So day and a half kind of sitting near the coastline and then it goes back the other way and ends up moving inland over Georgia again. You can see how we get so much rain in this kind of area where the storm hasn't really gone anywhere three to four days from where we're sitting right now. On the European model though, things are a little bit different. These two ridges are of slightly different intensities and this little piece right here is also a little bit weaker on the European model. So going forward, it does not stay near Georgia. Rather, it kicks out a little bit farther to the east over the water and then moves northward into South Carolina, moving into a very different spot than the GFS does by Thursday afternoon. So you can see that the models have significantly diverged by this time. Now this whole zone would get a lot of rain in both of these scenarios, but in terms of the potential impacts of other hazards like wind and coastal storm surge, these details are going to matter quite a lot, and there is potential for Debbie to re-strengthen when it gets back out over the water. That will be dependent on its structure. So if we look at, for example, the HAFS B high resolution hurricane model, by the time the storm gets near the Georgia South Carolina border, which is right here in about two and a half days, its structure has been quite hollowed out. This particular model shows a very broad center of circulation. You can see this drier area of gray surrounded by this very wide ring of green, which would indicate the thunderstorm and rainfall activity. And this is so hollowed out and broad that re-strengthening is not very likely if the structure were to turn out this way. If it was this broad, we wouldn't see that much change as the storm moves back inland. 
On the European model, though, a slightly different outcome. On Wednesday afternoon, it's kicked out over water, and this is a more compact storm core that does have the opportunity to re-intensify. So we see the central pressure lower and the circulation tighten up, and this is the kind of situation where Debbie could be approaching hurricane intensity again prior to its second landfall. But there's another wrinkle. And that's this coastal shelf water. Keep in mind that the Gulf Stream deep warm water is actually offshore in this zone where the warm water flows northward. The shelf water on the inland side or the coastal side of the Gulf Stream is easily cooled. And we're already seeing that. If we look at a buoy that's offshore St. Augustine and another one that's off Georgia right now, we are seeing significant water cooling due to the winds and rains of Debbie. So what was 20 to 29 degrees Celsius is now closer to 26 and a half degrees Celsius off St. Augustine and the same going on off of Georgia down to 27 degrees Celsius. This is interesting because some of the high resolution models that are coupled to the ocean like halves are starting to see this cooling. The Gulf Stream is this strip of dark red right here. And as we go forward, you'll see that this shelf water continues to cool. So you see this patch of cooler water where Debbie is supposed to move back out over the ocean. This is definitely enough to matter. There's nothing magic about the 26 degrees Celsius value that you sometimes hear about. This is cool enough to limit deep convection near the storm core if the storm does not get far enough out over the ocean to interact with the warm Gulf Stream. On the European model, it does move over the Gulf Stream for a brief time, which may help it strengthen more than if it stays closer toward the coast. And so that oceanic detail is also going to matter. It's not just about whether Debbie gets out over water, it's about how far over water. And that will be key over the next two to three days. If we look at the European ensemble in terms of track uncertainty here, we, we showed you that the deterministic European goes into essentially the Myrtle Beach area. Worth noting that this same model, run 51 different times with slight perturbations, gives a pretty fuzzy picture of the future. The European deterministic has been pretty consistent, but you'll see that by Wednesday night on the European ensemble, there's quite a spread of possible locations here. Some of these are more GFS-like. They pop out over Georgia and then they go right back into Georgia. So that does happen on some of these runs of the European, but a great many more also move up into the Carolinas, which is different from the GFS. And so you can see that even amongst these models, they're still not sure exactly how far this is coming out and where the second landfall will be. And as a result, humans aren't that sure either. And it's very difficult to nail that down right now. It's one of those things we're going to watch and see. We know that there's going to be a lot of rain either way. That has high certainty. The second landfall location and the associated wind and storm surge hazards, significantly less confident in those right now. But being aware of the range of outcomes is important for those of you preparing in this area of the southeast. If we look at the official forecast right now, we have seen a slight shift out over water from the uh, National Hurricane Center. It was less time yesterday off the coast, but now we're seeing 36 hours of time over that shelf water. Again, maybe that shelf water is a little cooler, so if it's tight to the coast like this, hopefully that keeps it from strengthening quite as much. But some restrengthening would be likely if there is any time over water, and this is back up to moderate to strong tropical storm strength by the time it gets towards uh, the Myrtle Beach area on this particular forecast. This has been moving around. If you've been following the NHC forecast, it has been getting adjusted and further adjustments are certainly possible given the uncertainties that I just showed you. You can see that this is kind of a long range forecast four days out and it's just getting inland over the Carolinas. That's enough time for things to change. But you can see there's a tropical storm warning now for the northern coast of Florida, all of the coastal Georgia and much of the South Carolina coastline as well. The big concern here is going to be the heavy rain. This is the accumulated map showing over 20 inches forecasted from Savannah to Charleston, South Carolina, and a wide swath of over a foot in red here along parts of southeastern Georgia, South Carolina, and even North Carolina. There is tremendous flash flooding potential here. A high risk from the Weather Prediction Center is a big deal. Typically means severe hazards are on the way. So please be prepared, know your vulnerability, and heed your local authorities in these areas and be prepared for potential flooding. 
There will also be the potential for coastal storm surge from seawater. This will be pretty dependent on whether and how much Debbie reintensifies over the ocean. Right now, showing two to four feet of inundation possible along coastal Georgia and South Carolina, but keep in mind this could change as well if Debbie intensifies more than expected over the water. And of course, we will continue to see uh, power outage issues, heavy rain and flooding over northern Florida and southern Georgia right now, as Debbie will take at least a day to get back to the coastline. This is a slow moving storm and we'll be dealing it with it for many days now and potentially even farther up the eastern seaboard once we get towards the weekend, there may be rain spreading up into the mid-Atlantic as well. That's about it for this video. I'll continue to have updates through the rest of the week. Follow me on social media on Twitter at Tropical Tidbits for more frequent updates, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.